Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I deliver you another Bakugo story. If you want to know why I'm doing so many Bakugo stories uh, as of recent, it's because the views are very much down and the Bakugo stories are the only ones that really generate any noticeable views. Uh, in addition, I'm getting more and more comments that tell me I'm underrated. So if you'd like to help me, uh, you can always share the video around, watch it until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below. This is how you ensure that my standing YouTube algorithm gets better and my videos get suggested to more people that maybe watch them, subscribe, like, comment, etc. It is sort of set up like a domino effect. I would also appreciate any fan art that you might throw my way, and I'm one of the few YouTubers that would actually be okay with NSFW art, you know, Pro 34. Uh, just anything, really. And if your fan art is good enough, I might even show it in one of my videos at the start, right after the cute animal picture of the day. Just send your fan art into my Discord, down in the description. Uh, so, yeah. If you want to support me, do that. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you're new here and you think I'm worth it, please hit the notification bell. That helps out as well. Okay. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get right into it. It had been a full week since the last time you had gotten a full night's sleep. You were just too worried. About school, about work, and training. No matter what you did, you felt as if any moment not spent on school work was worsening your performance. Luckily, no one noticed your change in behavior. So at least, you didn't need to feel any embarrassment for not being able to deal with this. In addition, there was a certain amount of jealousy. After all, your classmates didn't seem to have such problems. They were happily chatting the days away with each other. Which made you even feel more like a failure. It became exceedingly harder to concentrate on Aizawa's lessons. Your teacher had turned a lecture about hero philosophy into a rant about popular heroes who in his eyes were just posers. Part of you wanted to tell him to get back to the main topic. But when Ida did that the last time, everyone was mad at him for the rest of the day, including you. So it became an unwritten rule to just let the man talk and enjoy the quasi-break. With the teacher who took his two jobs this serious, moments like this were incredibly amusing. Your teacher had just reached a crescendo of very censored insults about Mount Lady, when your head hit the desk. You had fallen asleep for less than a minute. The quiet bump, however, was loud enough to get the attention of the entire class, including your teacher. Excuse me, is my lecture too boring for you, miss? N no You stuttered, barely able to contain a yawn, making your entire body tense up painfully in the process. It looked like you were falling asleep, growled Aizawa. The look on his face made your blood freeze. Please, just move on. The looks of your classmates and your angry teacher were becoming too much. And then, you broke down. You knew crying wouldn't get you anywhere, and you knew how it made you look like but you needed release. Unable to contain yourself, you didn't even notice when soft hands began to reach around you. You were unable to think, and just went with it. You didn't know who it was, but you also didn't care. Someone was guiding you outside, the hand gently resting on your shoulder. After you regained some of your sanity, meaning you calmed enough down to question the things around you, 
and you're locked up. The person next to you, the one who had pushed you outside, was Bakugo of all people. The blonde had a weird grimace of both anger and annoyance, and maybe that was wishful thinking, but also concern. He was mumbling curses as per usual. Sorry, you sniffled. I, I'm sorry. He didn't answer at first. You probably were saying sorry in your hysteria, so maybe he didn't notice at first. B Bakugo? You asked. The look he gave you, nothing more than a glance, was enough to quiet you down. And after a few seconds passed, he asked, What? His what stung? He sounded so angry. Where are we going? You stuttered as you were finally able to check your surroundings. You're right now in UA's lobby. We're going to the dorms. You whimpered. To pack my bags? Please, I'm sorry. Bakugo stopped dead in his tracks. What are you talking about? Pack your bags? <laughs> you really think they'll kick you out so easily? You let out a whimper and with quivering lips you answered. Yes. The boy groaned. I beat the shit out of Deku and all I got was a month of taking out the trash. It was to get detention or something. And then only because of the classes you'll be missing now. You gave him a confused look. You think after that performance you should go back for the rest of today's classes? This is a hero school, idiot. No one would let you. He paused. <laughs> Including me. You blushed. You two fell silent again as you walked the gravel path to the dorms. But eventually he opened his mouth. When was the last time you got a full night's sleep? You sniffled and wiped away the tears that were still rolling down your cheeks. I don't know. Two weeks? It were probably more than that. Bakugo groaned. Why the hell didn't you tell anyone? You gulped, feeling ashamed. I thought I needed to do this alone. I mean, others can. He sighed in annoyance, almost making you whimper in embarrassment. You idiot. That rich chick Momo's tutoring the lower extras. He paused for a moment. What I mean is, most of them are helping each other out. You looked at him. Of course, I don't need her dumb lessons. But when you need it, you should take it. You blushed. How do you do it? You asked. What? He barked. Deal with school, training, everything. He sighed. I want something you don't have. Confidence in my abilities. I read the school shit twice. And I'm confident enough that I remember it for a test. And look at that. Here I am. I actually remember it. You felt as if someone had set your butt on fire. Up until now you hadn't realized how important confidence was when it came to learning. By now the two of you had reached the dorms and he sat you down on the sofa in the community room. Your body was shaking as it tried to stay awake. Jeez, calm down, he growled. Easier said than done. He crossed his arms and mumbled to himself. Then he left for the small kitchen aisle, returning with a warm glass of milk. I'm going back until you drank all of that. Your stomach turned, 
You really had no appetite today. And the thought of putting anything in your mouth made you wretch. You prepared yourself for a moment and then gulped the white liquid down. When you slammed the glass back on the table, you were about to... When you slammed the glass back on the table, you were out of breath, your eyes now unable to focus. But you were still shaken too much, which, ag which agitated the explosive blonde. Oh Christ, what else do you need? For some reason, his anger was somehow adorable, and you had to suppress a giggle. Maybe you had finally went insane from the lack of sleep. I don't know. You said. I don't feel at peace enough. T too much adrenaline. For a moment he angrily chewed on one of his fingers before saying, Listen, if you tell anyone about this, I'll kill you. Before you could ask what he meant, he already sat down next to you. His arm around your shoulder, he gently pushed you down onto his lap. You blushed hard, and your heart fluttered for a moment. Then his calloused hands combed through your hair. Then one of his calloused hands combed through your hair while his other gently rubbed circles over your tummy. He didn't speak, but you glanced at the TV that stood opposite to the sofa. You could see in your reflection that not only he was blushing too, he also was completely focused at looking into a random direction, trying to avoid looking at you at all costs. It was awkward, but comforting. You felt at ease, protected, and eventually you closed your eyes. After a while you could feel him sliding off of you. So drunken from your sleepy days, you grabbed his arm and began cuddling with it, as if it was a teddy bear. And it took him a lot of composure to not start protesting. <laughs>